Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review and today I'm taking a look at this right here and of course this is the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Gundam Ground Type. Of course the Gundam Ground Type is from the 8th MS Team, probably one of the best Gundam series of all time because it really does deal with the one year war in a much more intimate and realistic real robot sort of way. It's awesome, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Once again, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want some Gunpla of your own, if you want some SD cross silhouette kits of your own, then check out that link down there in the description. So right there is what the SD cross silhouette ground Gundam looks like out of the box and snap together. If you're interested in the inner frame of this little guy, I did talk about that in the Sisqueed review if you want to check that out. But anyway, once again, this is just that standard inner frame. So I don't have the actual cross silhouette frame for this, which is a bit of a disappointment because I really do dig the proportions these guys have when they have that frame. They look pretty cool. However, you guys did mention in the last video, the Sisqueed video, that this right here, which is the frame that came with the RX Zero Maru, this is actually a cross silhouette frame. Sure, it's not the right color. The one you actually use for this kit right here is in white, but this will give us an idea of what it will be like. So towards the end of the review, I will throw this into him just so we can see what to expect with the cross silhouette frame. Before I was always of the opinion that with SD kits it's all looks over functionality and they're not really the funnest build per se but cross silhouette kits are starting to slowly slowly change my mind. The detailing and color separation on these guys is great, even better than some high grades in a way. I don't know when the last time I saw a high grade that would color separate these little segments on the knees or even the little V that's on that little crotch section there and all of that intricate detail in the torso and the way it all builds onto that inner frame is quite fun, makes the build a lot more interesting than your standard SD. And on top of that, these guys are photogenic as hell. All in all, I think they're starting to win me over. So beyond the standard looks, we do have some stickers. And actually, before I mention those, I'm quite impressed by the degree of detail on the surface of this. The panel lining, especially around the waist and the head, is great. We've got some awesome, awesome detail on this guy. And all in all, they've really stepped up the SD game with this line. So as for those stickers, here is all those foils. I've used the majority of them, and I don't know why I didn't use five there. That goes in the chest right there, and hmm, I don't know. But usually I just use the shiny style ones. Preferably, I prefer to fill that in with a panel liner or something. So as for the stickers, number one right here, of course, is for those chibi cute eyes. Three and four, of course, are for on the head cameras. That's this one on the front, and this one around here on the back. And as for the last one there, number two, that is actually for the alternate set of eyes. So as is usual with an SD, you can pop off the head, pop this part off, flip it around, and then you've got a more realistic, classic Gundam look to it. The eyes are green, just like the ground Gundam. And this little guy goes from cute to badass straight away. So there he is with some classic Gundams. Believe it or not, as much as I love 8th MS Team and as much as I love the concept of the ground Gundam with its awesome real robot vibe, I don't actually have a high grade, master grade or anything like that of the ground Gundam. Shame on me. That's just an excuse to go shopping. As well as the foils, we've also got some sticker style decals. These are just numbers for, of course, numbering your unit, what MS team that it is, as well as the unit number. So I just went with what was on the instructions. So this one is labeled unit 081, which of course is Shiro's ground Gundam. This is the one that does get damaged and eventually becomes the EZ-8. And I also used the larger one, just like in the instructions right here on the shield. And as for this mark right here, I didn't do that. That came like that on the runners. It looks like pen. Odd. First time I've ever seen something like that, but that'd be easy to remove, but I didn't remove it. But once again, 08 for the 8th MS team. But of course you do get 0 through 9 and multiples of the smaller numbers there, so you can make your own custom squad. Anyway, onto the accessories, and we've got the ground Gundam itself, three different weapons, the backpack, and the shield. As well as that, we also have this right here, and this is an alternate waist section or crotch section for using with the cross silhouette frame. That is one of these guys right here, but of course you'd want one in white. Looking through the weapons first, and in standard SD Gundam fashion, these are quite plain. So this right here is the beam rifle. The front section of this does move side to side, so that is a nice little feature. It is worth noting we didn't get a foil seal for sticking on the side there, so this is what it will look like unless you paint it. Next up then is the classic 100mm machine gun. Once again, this is quite plain, has a lot of hollow parts. 
And unlike the beam rifle, this does not have any moving parts whatsoever. So this little handle here is just molded on, that is all. Next up then we have the 180mm cannon, and this is quite big when it comes to SD weapons, that is. This does have a whole lot more going on than the other weapons we just saw. This little handle here is connected via a ball joint, so that does spinny, 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 spinny. Besides that then we've got two handles for attaching it, and the barrel can be removed for storage. And speaking of storage, we get what to me is one of the coolest aspects about the Ground Gundam, and that is the backpack. This of course is a big storage container. This can pop open just like so for storing the weapons. So let's throw them in there. In with the barrel, in with the cannon, there's the machine gun. Any chance we can get that beam rifle in? Mmm, it doesn't show in the instructions and the beam rifle is too large to fit. So anyway, once they're all in there, you can close that up. The little attachment section around on the back of the Gundam can just pop down like so, and the whole thing then can attach on like that. So that is pretty cool. It does make him a little bit back heavy though. The last of the equipment we see in here then is the shield, which we've seen already with that little bit of pen on it. Flip it around, you can see that this is made out of three different colors of plastic. That's dark gray. Goodbye. Ahem! That is dark gray around here on the back white as well as the blue, which matches the unit. That of course then just attaches simply enough onto the back of the forearm like this, or we can take this whole segment here, move it down to the bottom, and then that can be posed as if it's stuck into the ground to be used as a prop for the cannon, just like this right here. And speaking of which, here is a quick look at what the ground gun will look like with each of its weapons. First up, there it is rocking its classic beam rifle, Secondly, there is the 100mm machine gun. This is one of my favorite weapons because it's such a simple, awesome design and I love the concept of Gundams firing actual projectiles, not lasers or beams. And lastly then is the huge 180mm cannon. Well, it's huge by SD standards and there it is propped up once again on that shield. So as you can see with this pose right here, he does have a little bit of an issue grabbing onto the gun. I had to take advantage of the fact that by turning these arms inwards, they have a bit of a natural bend to them. Usually that is towards the front like so. So you need to bend that in on both in order to hold both handles. So speaking of which, let's move straight into the articulation. So as usual, we're going to be working from the head down. So the head on these cross silhouette guys is a ball joint. So there we've up, down, left and right that can't necessarily go all the way around. We also have a bit of a hinge inside of the neck. Pop that off so you can see that, so that means it can go up and down like this, but of course it can't go back too far. Blocked by these. Simple ball joint in the shoulder. We've got a ball and socket in here which allows the arm to raise up like so, move down like that, also giving us full rotation. And then we have a standard ball joint inside the wrist. That's all, no bend at the elbow. At the waist, all we have is rotation. That can go all the way around. And before I forget it, just like we saw before, this little section can drop down on the back, close up like so. Ball and socket at the hip, this pops out all of the time. That can rotate. The ankle armor here is also on a ball joint, so we got a bit of side to side pivot. And that can be moved up and down ever so slightly. And of course, once again, the ankle right here is just a ball and socket. Off comes the leg. So of course, that is your standard movement there. Up, down, and a full rotation. So that right there is the limit to the standard frame you get with one of these guys. Even though it's not the right color, I am going to try this with the Zero Maru's frame, just like you guys suggested. So let's get this inside of that. So there we go, frame transfer complete from the standard SD frame to the cross silhouette frame here. So there it is with the cross silhouette frame and I dig these new proportions. They're like SD, just a little bit more elongated and I think this looks absolutely epic. Of course it's not meant to be red, it's meant to be white if you use the white cross silhouette frame. However, the red is kind of good in a way that you can see what parts of the frame actually are visible when the kit is fully built. So a lot of them have chunky bits on them to look like armor. So all in all, this looks pretty awesome. Let's check how it poses. So the neck here is exactly what we saw before. What is new is we now have a shoulder joint that moves forward and back like so. The shoulder armor is fully locked into the frame's shoulder section, so that doesn't get anything extra. Now, however, we do have a bend there at the elbow, and not too bad of a bend at all. There it is, all the way bent. There is it fully extended. So very nice. The waist is pretty much what we saw before. This doesn't really move, just side to side rotation like so. That goes all the way around. Once we get down to the legs, there's a lot more going on. Inside the waist unit here, we do have this joint right here. 
which did come with this particular kit, so that allows the legs to rock out like so, so you can actually get this into a cute sitting position. The hip joints themselves are a standard ball and socket this time around, pointing the way you want them to point, not just directly down like we saw before. So that does allow for a kick up to the front. Of course, dropping that out gets you a better kick, as you can see. A kick out to the back, once again, bring that down for a more extended kick. As with the splits, we don't get the full splits, but they do kick out quite a bit, so that's not so bad. This frame adds upper thigh rotation, so there it is all the way around. We now have a bend at the knee, there it goes. Not bad, not great, but definitely not bad. And the ankle down here is exactly the same ball joint that we saw before. So all in all, adding that frame does change the game entirely when it comes to articulation. It doesn't make it fantastic, but it does make it a whole lot better. And yes, now it can finally pull off that 180mm cannon shooting pose. And all in all, I love this frame expansion. So that right there is it for the review, and all I can say is the SD Gundam cross silhouette line is definitely the evolution of SD Gundam. With what you get in the box, you get a very classic SD Gundam, but with a lot more part separation and that awesome little inner frame. All the parts snap on really easily, they come off really easily, so converting it from SD to CS is quite easy. However, for me, I do feel that the cross silhouette frame is almost compulsory. This new variant, this new style of slightly extended SD is fantastic. It looks great, has the cuteness of SD, but gives it that extra bit of articulation, and I think this style the general look is so much better, but then again, that is a personal thing. However, what comes in this box is what I'm going to make the standard basis for what I rank any SD kits I'll review in future against. So this right here is the silver tier of the SD kits. Basically, that's what I will be expecting from here on out. Any better will be gold tier, any worse will be bronze, but this right here is silver. Of course, I can't rank what this was like with the cross silhouette frame in this video because it did not come with it. But if it did, that to me would be the gold tier of SD. So I know there is some kits out there like the RX-78 II that does come with it. So maybe I'll try some of them in future, see what they're like. Maybe. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. You can get one at Hobby Link Japan. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. And as always, I'll see you next time.